although our slab is nice and dry, we're going to lay some plastic down anyway. One thing you need to remember is check with the manufacturer to see what thickness of plastic they recommend. When you lay it, lay it over the whole floor and overlap the joints by 200 millimetres and make sure you securely tape the joint. And at the junctions of the wall, fold it up just enough so when the skirting goes back on, it'll cover the plastic. A sharp utility knife and a straight edge are the perfect tools for this job. When you join the plastic, don't forget the 200 millimetres overlap. Apply a good quality duct tape and make sure you seal it up nice and tight. Use extra tape if you have to because you won't have access to the plastic once the floor is down. I've turned the plastic up about 70 mil and I've taped it to the wall. That'll just hold it in place. Well, that's the plastic done. Now, I know you don't see the plastic, but it's very important that you do it properly. That'll save a lot of drama later on. Underlay is a foam-based product. It provides a cushioning effect for the boards and absorbs some of the sound. And after a hard day's work, it's actually quite comfortable as well. Now with these boards, the underlay needs to run the same way as the boards, but yours may be different and you'll need to check what the instructions say. Now when you cut the underlay, don't allow for any upturn on the wall or any overlap on the joins. Make sure you put a scrap piece of timber underneath. If you don't, the knife will cut through the foam and then cut the plastic. That would ruin the waterproofing and that will be really annoying. It's important that the first row of boards is running perfectly straight and to do that you need to check the wall with a string line. If it's not, you need to scribe the first row. This wall is running slightly out and I'll show you all the steps in doing the scribing. Scribing is a term that we use that means we reproduce the shape of the wall onto the board. And the simplest way to do that is to run a block up against the wall with a pencil or texter and that will reproduce the shape. The first thing you've got to do though is determine the width of the room and make sure the last board is not less than 50 millimetres. I'll explain a bit more about that later on. Put the block up against the wall and run the texture along as you slide it. Now the idea here is to use a block that's as small as possible. If you use a wider one or a longer one, that'll just skip over the hollows and that will defeat the purpose of scribing altogether. Another tip, put some masking tape on the back of the block so you don't scratch the wall. Otherwise you'll lay your floor and you'll have to paint the wall. Before you cut the boards with your jigsaw, it's a good idea to cover the base plate with duct tape. That way, you won't scratch the face of the board. Handy hint, before we take the boards out, remember to number them. That way, they'll go back in the correct order. For strength and appearance, you'll need to stagger the joints. That means every second row, you'll need to have a half board. Just cut it on your drop saw. One thing to remember, have a nice fine blade. Otherwise, you'll just rip the boards and make a mess. Before we lay any more boards, there's two things we need to consider. The first thing is to measure the width of the room and make sure our last row of boards is not less than 50 millimetres. If it is, we need to cut some more off the first row. The second thing we need to determine is to make sure these two walls are square. And the simplest way to do that is to use our 345 method. If I measure 900 millimetres along that wall, 1200 millimetres along this wall, between the two points should be 1500 millimetres. And if it is, that means our corner is exactly 90 degrees. These are the boards that we've just cut. Normally interlocking boards don't require any gluing, but it's a good idea to put some sealant on the joints because when you have that spilt cup of coffee or the kids kick their cordial over, That'll prevent the liquid from penetrating the joints and causing the board to swell. Now the manufacturers of these boards require a 12 to 15 millimetre clearance gap all the way around the room. 
That way, it allows for humidity changes. The simplest way to achieve the gap is just to use packers or you can get some little wedges. Now, the other important thing to remember, lay the first row with the tongue against the wall. That way, when you tap the boards together, you're tapping against the flat edge, not against the tongue. If you tap against the tongue, that'll cause a lot of damage. One other important thing to remember, follow the manufacturer's instructions. If you don't, that could null the warranty.